1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul said, I fight not as one who is beating the air. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he says that something called building like a wise master builder. Isaiah chapter 28 talks about line being upon line and precept being upon precept. Here we lead to and there we lead to. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, we were called God's building. We were called God's field. So we are God's building. God is working on you and I. In Psalm 102 and verse 16, we are told that when God is done building Zion, he will appear in his glory. So God is building you. God is building me progressively layer upon layer. And as an emphasis for each season, for each season. And that is why in this house, every month there is an emphasis. There is something God is saying to us per time. Psalm 85 and verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. What is God going to speak? Peace to his people and to his saints that they are not turned back to fully. In Isaiah 30. The Bible said in verse 21, you will hear a word behind saying, this is the way, walk in it. What is God saying to us in this month? He's saying to us that it is his will for us to experience all around prosperity, total life prosperity. John chapter 8 and verse 31, he said, how do you know a true disciple if you continue in my word? It not start, but continue in my word. Continue in my word. Only those who continue will know the truth, verse 32. And then when they know that body of truth, uh, it will make them free. Not somebody who just comes and does touch and go. Takes one message and then it goes. You know, he doesn't have the totality of the counsel of God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 27. Paul said, I have not shown to declare to you the total total counsel of God. So you don't just run with just half truth. No, you have everything that you need. So the Bible says, the Bible says all scripture, glory to God, is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for four, four, four or five things, for reproof, for instruction, for doctrine, for correction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, complete, Thoroughly furnished unto every good work. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and verse 17. So God wants you and I to always be in the know and to know enough that we can walk with, that we can run with. Glory be to Jesus. Enough to run with. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing. In Proverbs chapter 4, and verse 20, he said, my son, attend to my words, incline your ears to my sayings, my sayings. I'm like, are you hearing me? To my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart because they are life to those who find them and health or medicine to all their flesh. We're talking this morning on developing a prosperous soul. Developing a prosperous soul. Now, it is God's will for his people to prosper. Now, the earth is full of God's riches. Our God is a wealthy God. The Bible said in Psalm 104 and verse 24, the Bible says the earth is full of God's riches. The earth is full of God's possessions. So the earth is full of God's riches. And these riches are placed there with you and I in mind. Psalm 35 and verse 27. God's pleasure is in the prosperity of those who serve him. When you read Deuteronomy, Exodus 23. And verse 25, Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. He will take away sickness from the midst of you. So it is in God's will for those who serve him to do well, to thrive, to do well. In fact, God wants to so bless you that people who are looking at you will begin to desire what you have. 
they will begin to desire what you have. That's why the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23, it said, 10 men out of every nation will come to him who is a Jew and say, we have seen that God is with you. They want to follow you. Your life becomes attractional. Your result becomes inspiring for other people. People look at you and they desire what you have. When David heard that the house of Obededom was blessed by playing host to the ark, he also desired the same thing. Let the ark also come to my own house as well. Some people don't read the Bible, but they're reading you and I. We are their pieces that they are reading. So God wants our life to be that resort backed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory be to Jesus. Let your light so shine that men may see and glorify your Father that is in heaven. Whilst God wants you and I to prosper, and you will prosper. In the name of Jesus. While God wants you and I to prosper, it is important that we know that prosperity uh, uh, is not limited to wealth. It's not limited to the bank balance that you have. It's okay to have money in your account. But you see, you can be rich and be a rich fool. There was a rich fool in the Bible. You can be prosperous. And according to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 32, the Bible talks about the prosperity of fools, that it will destroy them. Prosperity of fools will destroy them. KJV, Proverbs 1 and verse 32. It said the turning away of the simple is going to slay them. The prosperity of fools is going to destroy them. So it's not enough to just have money in your bank account. No. That is why the Bible tells us in 3 John and verse 2 that his wish above all things is that you prosper and then be in health even as your soul prospers. So you're meant to prosper in your finances, prosper in your health, but most importantly, prosper in your soul. That is God will look at you and assess your state from, from, a, from a heaven's perspective. That there was a man that was rich. He was even a king. And the Bible said he was numbered. The Bible said you know, you know, the guy was a king. He was, he, he thought he was doing well. And then one day he woke up and he saw a writing on the wall. Mene, mene, tekel, uprasin. Meaning that, listen, look at you. We have weighed you in the balance. We have numbered you. And we can tell that your days are up. That is, you have not lived for God. You have not lived the way that, that is honorable to God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, there was a man who was making money, he was doing well. Uh, at the end of the day, he realized that he had made so much money that year, you know, and then he was thinking about how he was going to continue to self-consume all the resources that he was getting. And in verse 22, the Bible said that man, you know, Luke 12 and verse 22, can we look at it? V verse 20, Luke 12 and verse 20. But God said to him, fool. He was supposed to be a rich man. He looked at that 12 and verse 16. He was called a certain rich man. A certain rich man. Let me tell you this. It is not what men call it that count. But what God calls it. God looked at this man in verse 20 and said, you are a fool. Tonight your soul will be required of you. Now you see, this man didn't pay attention to the most important thing. The state of his soul. He paid attention to the figures, the bank balance, how he was doing in his business, but he was not doing soul care. Soul care. He wasn't paying attention to how he was on the inside. And this is what God always measures. Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9. God's eyes run to and fro to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is loyal, right. Towards him. This is what God looks at. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. They are the ones who are going to see God. Proverbs 4 23 says, Guard that heart. That is what you should pay your most important attention to. Guard your heart. Why should you have security guard for your house and there is no guard for your heart? Your heart is open. You allow all sorts, all sorts, all sorts. Every thought that comes, you allow it. Every single thought. Thought of competitiveness, you allow it. Jealousy, you allow it. Insecurity, you allow it. You are, you are losing the most important thing. 
The most important thing is going. And when the most important thing goes, then how do you now enjoy all those things you are chasing after? How do you enjoy it? Because you can keep the bands. Give me the soul. You can keep the bands. You can keep the wardrobe. Keep all the cars in the world. But can I have the soul, please? Can I have the soul? He said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the entire world and loses his own soul? Meaning that your soul should not be a commodity for exchange. No. You should pay attention to the state of your soul at all times. At all times. So this morning we are looking at the all marks of a prosperous soul. Psalm 106 and verse 15, the Bible said God gave them their requests, but he sent leanness into their soul. So it is possible to have one and lack the other. You can have money, but your life is not making money. It is possible to have money, but you see money may be able to build a house, not give you a home. Money has limits. Money has limits, a whole lot of limits. Money can buy you valium, not good sleep. It can give you a water bed. It can take you on a, on a cruise in around the world. You got the resources to do that, but not peace of mind. Not peace of mind. So when you have one and lack the other, what happens eventually is that the one you have, you don't enjoy it. It is only what God gives that the man can enjoy. First, first Timothy chapter 6, the Bible said in verse 17, God gives us all things richly to enjoy. The excess is for you to enjoy it. But you see, when God is not in the equation, you will have the blessing, but without the enjoyment. Only the blessing of the Lord makes rich and hearts no sorrow. For me, can you hear what I'm saying this morning? Only the blessing of the Lord. Only the blessing of the Lord. You can get a man at all costs, but will he love you? Will he be there for you? Will he be as a hiding place? Isaiah 32 and verse 2. In that day, a man shall be as a hiding place. That's the kind of man you need. A man who's going to be as a hiding place. A man who can say to you, like David said to Abiathar in 1 Samuel 22 and verse 23, stay with me. Because he who seeks your life, seeks my life. But with me, you will be safe. That's the kind of man that you need. That kind of a man, you can't get it by just looking beautiful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Such a man, his steps are ordered by God. Ordered by God. You can get a woman because she's looking beautiful. Yes, that's a woman, not a wife. Not a wife. An excellent wife is an inheritance from God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You cannot calculate your way to God's best for you. You can't. You can't calculate. Let me plot the graph. If I take this step and I do this, then they will see me that this will happen. <laughs> Continue to plot. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean upon your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. There are things that are above your pay grade. There are things you have no control over. There is the most high who works all things after the counsel of his will. You must learn to trust your future to God's faithfulness. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Glory be to Jesus. So, what are the qualities of a prosperous soul? When you see a man who has begun to prosper in his pocket, but he's not prospering in his soul, that prosperity will be found in his weakness. But when a man begins to prosper in his soul, it's only a matter of time. It's said in Psalm 37 and verse 37, Mark the perfect man. Behold the upright. The end of that man is peace. Mark the man who is living right. The Bible says that uh, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to anyone. Godliness is profitable unto all things. Having a promise of the life that now is 
and of that which is to come. Let me say this again to the 21st century man and woman. When you want to make a marital choice, don't just look at a man based on all you can see right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is so important. David grew up in a house where nobody saw in him the possibility of him wearing a crown. It took an external person who came visiting to say there is a palace material in this boy. As far as they were concerned, he was good enough as an errand boy, as a shepherd boy, but not as a material for the palace. Even after he was anointed as king, they still sent him back to be keeping sheep. After he was anointed, the best they could do was to send him on an errand to go and give food to his brothers. They still were not convinced that the prophet, are you getting what I'm saying? They were not convinced that this boy, of all the children in this house, but the stone rejected by the builders, always eventually becomes the chief cornerstone. Glory be to God. So, how do you know if you are prospering in your soul? Because you can know. You can know. It is possible for you to know how you are doing. We are told that we should examine ourselves. Second Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Examine ourselves. Lamentations 3 and verse 40. We are told to examine, our, uh, 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 to consider our ways. A guy 1 verse 5, A guy 1 verse 7, A guy 1 5, A guy 1 7. Consider your ways. So it is possible for a man to be able to tell what state he is in, whether he's doing well or not. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? So, how do you know? We're looking at a few ways to tell how we are all doing. How we are all doing. The first way to tell if your soul is prosperous is that a prosperous soul always remembers all the right things. It's not everything that is right. Some things aren't right. Some things are questionable. Some things can cause you to worry and rightfully so. Then why is this happening? Why did that happen? Should that happen to somebody like that? It's like what happened to Uza when he died and David couldn't stand it. David had two emotions when he saw what happened to Uza. Number one, he was angry. Number two, he was afraid. Every time people go through things, when bad things happen to good people, you can have these two emotions, the emotion of anger or the emotion of fear. Why should that happen to somebody who is going to church, who is serving God? And then, hey, I don't want my life to turn out like this. So if that can happen to that person, maybe it can happen to anybody. The emotion of anger and fear. David couldn't stand it when who's that died like that. It's in your Bible. But you see, while everything may not be right, if you are prospering in your soul, one of the ways to tell is that the only things you will keep remembering will be the right things, and not everything. Psalm 103 verse 1 and verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So there are some things you are going to forget, but not his benefits. You are going to remember God's benefits. Then he listed seven of them from verse 3 all the way down to verse 6 and verse 7. He listed about seven of them. So there are things to forget, but there are things to remember. Those who remember the wrong things are never able to move beyond them. When you keep remembering the wrong things, you'll be recycling your pain, recycling your regrets. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 15, it's like a relationship. If you keep remembering the wrong things in a relationship, that relationship will not grow. It's not going to grow. This is the essence of forgiveness. To let go of yesterday's heart, yesterday's past, believing in the possibility that this person can become better, do better. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if you keep reminding me of, you did that yesterday. You did that five years ago. How am I going to ever get better? I won't, I won't be able to get better. I believe you have already concluded on your opinion as far as who I am is concerned. So just, you've already passed the judgment on me. That's okay. There's no point trying to convince you otherwise. It's not working. It's too much stress trying to convince you otherwise. So let me just be. Let me just be. 
So the Bible says, I'm taking my time, but I'm, I'm going somewhere. Is it, can I continue? The Bible says that if they had been mindful, Hebrews 11 verse 15, of where they came from, they would have had opportunities to return back there. So if you keep remembering the wrong things, you are opening the door for them to keep happening. They will keep happening again and again and again and again in your life. Hallelujah. A prosperous soul remembers only the right things. Number two, a prosperous soul is free from identity crisis. Identity crisis. Some people are so competitive. You know why? They have identity crisis. So they measure their worth by the performance of somebody else. If they cannot outperform you, they don't think they are doing well. And you see, your greatest competition is not your next door neighbor, but yourself. How can you be your best self? How can you overcome your own self-limiting tendencies? Because what each of you has been called to do is different. So there's no point in trying to run somebody else's race. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just be yourself and be comfortable in your skin. Stop allowing society, social media, you know, to define your true value and your true worth. Stop trying to buy the kind of hair that would take six months to be able to pay. Four, that's not an hair. That's a yoke. You buy the hair that, that gives you nightmares. You buy the hair that now gives you a headache. Of, you, you see, because you cannot pick it because you, you know you're hoeing. Over the air, when they strip everything from you, what is left is your true worth. When they strip everything from you, the car, let them take away the car, the title, the title, the money, and all of that. In Proverbs 23 and verse 5, the Bible says, will you set your heart on that which is not? He said, because the riches certainly will develop wings. And fly like an eagle toward heaven. Go back to where they came from. So don't set your heart on things that are potentially changeable. Potentially changeable. Don't set your heart on your appearance. You may be a slaying queen today. Enjoy it while it lasts. Some people are always taking pictures. It's good though. It means you have a robust self-esteem. Some people, after service, they take picture outside, take picture here, take picture there, take picture at the toilet, take picture everywhere. When they're looking at their phone, it's not the message they really know, it's the picture they're looking at. We know you are a joy girl today. Enjoy it while it lasts. The day is going to come, you will no longer be on the stage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's just what it is. You are going to age. You are going to grow old. And by God's grace, you will live long. Yeah. So don't base your worth on your appearance, on your bank balance, on the car you are driving. You know, if you are basing your worth on the car you are driving, you're not the one driving the car. The car is driving you. The car is driving you. Glory be to Jesus. What, you should, what should you base your worth on? What God has said about you. Understand this, that every person that you meet, all that you see is not all there is to them. In Genesis chapter 37, was for me, this so blessed me. Genesis 37 and verse 29. They had left Joseph in the pit. Then Reuben went to look for him in the pit where they left him. And indeed, Joseph was no longer in the pit. He was once in the pit. But by the time the mother returns, he had left that address. There is some people you know, how they started this year is not how they are going to end this year. So just because you have seen a man in his today does not mean you know everything about his tomorrow. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. The person you are going to give a lift after service today may buy you a yacht tomorrow. You're not hearing what I'm saying, you know. Years ago, in Unilag, while Oshibajo, this is not Campino, 
Paul Oshibaju was still a dean, faculty of law. A friend of his who was working at the egg, at the egg you know the egg, word court, asked for him to recommend somebody as a secretary for them at the egg. And then he recommended a secretary in Unilag, in the faculty of law. And the woman was moved to the egg to start working there. Oshibaja was saying this at a meeting that was in Desta years ago. That that particular year, the woman from egg sent Oshibajo a hamper was the motor car. Secretary that you just passed like this. That he recommended to the egg was not going to say thank you to her boss. Christmas Amber, why you, you are receiving seven thousand dollar conflicts? You are receiving conflicts. You are receiving. Eh? It's also a level. His own came in a very small package, just a tiny key. Big things come in small packages. From a secretary, don't look down on anybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? From a secretary. Why we look not at the things that are seen? Everybody you see, they are still moving. They are still moving. You have not seen their best yet. So never look down. Never talk down on anybody. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. So a prosperous soul is free from identity crisis. Psalm 139 and verse 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. God told me to tell you. There is a difference between what is true and what is truth. Something can be true, but it is not the truth. What is true today may not be true tomorrow. Luke chapter 1 verse 36. This is the sixth month with her that was called barren. So in one season of her life, that was true. She was barren. In one season of her life. But the truth is that, no, she's a joyful mother of children. Psalm 113 verse 7 verse 8 verse 9. He lifts the poor from the dust. Many status has changed for the poor. The needy from the donkey change of status for the... Are you getting what I'm saying? Verse 9 says that he makes the barren woman to keep home to become a joyful mother of children. I see God turning your wilderness into a fruitful field. If you believe what I say, can you say an amen of faith? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number three, a prosperous soul, a prosperous soul is rested and trusted. Rested in God. Trusting in God. No matter what they are going through right now, they, they can sleep through a storm. Mark chapter 4 verse 37. A great wind storm arose, the Bible told us. But in verse 38, see the reaction of Jesus to a storm. He was in the inner part of the sea, of the ship, and he was sleeping. You see, you can sleep through a storm because your mind is not focused on the storm, but on the one who can calm it. The one who can calm it. So you can have the bad news from the doctor, and you maintain a calm countenance. Because you know that it does not end with the doctor. Who is he that will save him? And it will come to pass. When the Lord has not commanded it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus was the one who was sleeping in the middle of a storm. Human beings can't. Listen. Acts chapter 12. They told Peter, you're going to be killed. They kept him in prison. And the Bible said so graphic in verse 6. Acts 12 and verse 6. That night, before the night he was meant to be killed, he was sleeping. <laughs> it should have been a night when Peter should have been awake. should have been the longest night for Peter. It should have been that, but the guy was sleeping. Are you getting what I'm saying? So nothing should be so big that you cannot sleep over it. Just go to bed. Except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain who watch it. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Who built it? Except the Lord who watches over the city. The watchman work, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, sit up late, eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gave a good sleep to his beloved. He said, be still and know that I am God. In that situation, God will show up as God for you. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 11 and 29. Matthew eleven twenty nine is to take my yoke upon you and learn of me because I'm meek and lowly and you will find rest. Somebody say rest. Somebody say rest. Tell yourself, say rest. You see, whenever a plane is in the middle of a turbulence, what do they say? Your seatbelt. Your seatbelt. It's not the time to begin to move around. No. Calm down. The pilot is saying, I've got this under control. You know your pilot, your pilot is the Almighty God. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath you are the everlasting arms. It may be a turbulent time for you. For everybody, it may be April, but for you, it is a stormy April. A turbulent April. But God is saying He will see you through. You will get to the other side. Every great storm always ends with a great calm. A great calm. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Hallelujah. Rested in God. Number four, a prosperous soul is joyous. And you know, these are the days of mental health. Every discussion is about mental health, mental health, mental health. Be careful not to overrate a challenge. Not to overrate what you are dealing with. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then you allow yourself to become suicidal, to become depressed. That's something called the joy of the Lord. The reason more people are having issues of mental health is because they have their hopes built on the wrong things. So when a man walks out, they think that is the end of their life. That is, you have overrated a human being. Woe to that man that makes the arm of the flesh his strength. You say, without you, there is no me. Eh? If you leave, I will kill myself. Ah. Be careful. Every man, every woman is replaceable. Every one of them. Every single one of us replaceable. Every single person. So be careful. Oh, some people, some people you lose a job. You are, you are doing an interview. You're doing the first stage, second stage, third stage. Then you get to the fourth stage. And you are so sure you did so well. And then you are waiting. They say, we'll get back to you. And you have been waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And now it's eight months. You are trying to tell yourself that. Is it really like they've forgotten? Or what exactly is going on? Particularly when you pick a promised sleep in church. That says better is the end of a thing. Than the beginning thereof, before the interview. And then he spoke and I said, I will go before you and make straight the quicker places. Then you went for it. And then you pick Esther 215. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all. So you are wondering what exactly is wrong here? Let me tell you this. Until it ends well, it's not the end. Now, let me tell you, whilst the journey continues, it will be your choice to either enjoy the journey or endure the journey. Many people are not enjoying this journey. They're too, they're too tensed. They're too pressured. They're not enjoying the journey. There are other lessons to learn while you are still in your waiting room. Other lessons to learn. He has the finality. On anything. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? That baby is going to come. What you have been waiting for is coming to pass. Either we come, we come and we not tarry. The visa will come. The promotion will come. The miracle will happen. The baby will be born. Your lifting shall come to pass. 
In the name of Jesus, your man will come. Your wife will come. Let me hear amen again. Hebrews 10, 37. He that will come, will come and will not tarry. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. Number five. Is it number four now? Is that number four or number five? How many have I mentioned? Number one? I didn't hear you. Number two? Huh? Number three? Number four? I've mentioned that. Number five, celebrates what God is doing for others. A prosperous soul learns to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Let me tell you this. If God is doing anything for anybody, your hunger cannot stop it. So relax. In, in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 27, it said, when God purposes, who can annul it? When his hand is stretched forth, who can turn it back? So by being hungry does not mean God will not stop what he has started. No, he won't. Whenever God begins to bless anybody, what you should do is to get excited because if you can do it for one, you can do it for others. But whatever you attack, you will never attract. It's only what you choose to partner with that you can become a partaker of. Luke chapter 5 and verse 7. They beckon to their partners. When you partner with anybody, you become a partaker of whatever it is God is doing in their life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Somebody's wearing a night dress. Don't say, why is the body here? That's, don't be like an open person. Somebody's getting married. You're hungry. Why is husband that short? <laughs> don't, don't, don't be like that. I even went to that wedding. We were not plenty. Don't, don't be like that. Don't be seeing the wrong things about everything. Don't be like that. Don't be a killjoy. If I'm pulling anybody's hand down, my own hand is not going down. So the right seed at all times. So celebrate whatever God is doing in the lives of others. Listen, you cannot lift yourself up. You can only work hard. You can't lift yourself. You can't. You can only work hard. And if you push your way to the top, you have sown a seed. Somebody is coming behind you will also push you out. If you elbow your way to the top, somebody will come with a bigger elbow and elbow you out. Oh, this is the Bible, though. It's in the Bible. So, celebrate whatever God is doing in anybody's life. Number six, a prosperous soul is generous. Generous. Proverbs eleven twenty five. I'm almost done. Are you blessed this morning? A pro prosperous soul is generous. Proverbs 11 and verse 25. The Bible says the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. Let me tell you this. There are three perspectives that you can have to resources. Number one, you can be covetous. That's the first perspective. And what does that say? What is yours should be mine and I intend to take it. That's the perspective. What is yours? I like that white jacket. It should be mine. So I'm doing everything to take that jacket. That's the perspective. That's another perspective that says, what is mine is mine. And I intend to keep it. Preach till fire comes down. You will not get anything out of my pocket. You these preachers with sugar-coated mouths. Continue. Continue. Just be preaching. I know where you're going to land. Continue. That's another perspective. One says, what is yours should be mine. And I intend to take it. And if you're not careful, it can drive you to any limit. Any limit. To do anything. To get what God has given to somebody else. Number two, what is mine is mine. 
and I intend to keep it. You won't get anything out of me. Be shedding tears like this. I'll be shedding tears with you. Oh, oh my, love is so difficult. This is super story. I love them another. Oh. We are all pensioning the hand of God. The hand of the creator. Thank you. Oh my show. Ah. Ah. We'll pray about this matter. We'll pray. God will see us through. That's the perspective. Then there's a top perspective that says, what is in my hand has a source. And I'm only a distribution center. That is the mentality of stewardship. Whatever is in your hand has a source. Has a source. And you're only a distribution center. Distribution center. That God just chose to channel those things through you. You could have channeled them through somebody else. So don't, don't hold on. It's, you see, don't, you see, he's no fool who gives what he cannot keep in order to gain what he can never lose. I'm holding on to it. I remember years ago, I can never forget this, this event marked me. Many years ago, this is many years ago, more than 15 years ago. A particular woman who used to scavenge in my neighborhood. I saw her that day, I was driving home in the afternoon from work, and I saw her. She didn't ask me for anything, but I took money. I gave her. She didn't ask. She thanked me. And I would do, man. The following day, around the same time, I saw her again for my house. She didn't ask me the first time. Oh. Something in my small, stupid, foolish, foolish head was thinking, I hope she will not ask me for money today. She didn't ask me the first time. Oh. I was the one I gave her. And she thanked me and took it. And then I'm coming and I see her again. And I'm saying in myself, in my mind, I hope she will not ask me for money today. And I could hear God say, whose money? Whose money? I could hear God say, is it your money? Or a money that I chose to channel through you? God said to me, do you prefer role reversal? That she should be the one that has, and you are the one that needs Wherever you are, it's a privilege. Kings have gone mad before. Kings have gone mad before. So don't think you can go mad. Wherever you are, or wherever you are, it's a privilege. I am what I am by the grace of God. So be a steward of that season. Because that season is not your rest, it's your test. If you handle it well, you qualify what is next in God's plan for you. First Timothy 3 verse 13. He said, those who, have, those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing. What I'm saying is, when you use an office well, you qualify for the next. In God's plan, in God's agenda. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you use an office well, when you steward it well, be a steward of every season that you are in right now. We brought nothing to the world. We'll take nothing with us at the end of the day. Yeah. Number seven. Last point. A prosperous soul is responsive to God. Responsive to God. A prosperous soul is not hardened. Hardened is responsive to God. Responsive to God. You see, there are things that count with God. One of which is a broken heart. A heart that trembles at God's instruction. Psalm 51 and verse 17. I'm almost done. Just, just listen to this last bit of it. Psalm 51 and verse 17. The Bible says that God's sacrifices are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. God will never despise or overlook or disregard. Listen. In Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 7, the Bible says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Why? 
verse 9 says, because there remains a rest. A rest. Now you see, when your heart is closed, what you de do is that you deprive yourself of the opportunity to be able to access what is still ahead in God's plan for you. I'm not sure if you got that. The reason why you should not have it in your heart is because there remains a rest. When you're hearing God's voice, don't close your heart. The moment God cannot reach you, help cannot reach you. The moment God cannot reach you, nothing good can reach you anymore. The man who is beyond correction is beyond redemption. A prosperous soul is responsive when God says, you are wrong, you accept it. You turn. You turn. Psalm 119 and verse 59. I thought of my ways and I turned my feet towards your testimony. I thought of my ways. I reflected on my ways, my lifestyle. And I turned my feet towards your testimony. They told the man who was in his 50s, stop taking sugary things. Stop this. He wouldn't stop. Within six months he died. He wouldn't stop. He said, stop, stop, stop all of these things. Stop. But he won't stop. The backslider is filled with his own ways. But a good man will be satisfied from above. Proverbs 14 and verse 14. He wouldn't stop. He just continued. Just continue. Some people are set in their ways. They can't be helped. Once you cannot be corrected, you cannot be helped. Not even God can help a man who cannot be corrected. So a, a prosperous soul is responsive. You hear something, your heart is broken. You say, ah, no, I can't continue like this. I've got to do better. I've got to change my ways. I've got to change my ways. Now, how do you develop this kind of a soul? Three ways quickly. Number one, I'll just tell you, write it down. I know you want to go home. But whatever it is I'm teaching, it's because of my commitment to what I've been called to do to help you to be the best you can possibly be. I hope, I hope you're finding value in it. Because in the end, we're accountable to God where these things are concerned. Three ways. Number one, private conversations. Having private conversations with God and with yourself. Having private conversations with God and with yourself. Private conversations. This is the essence of the Psalms. It's about a man having conversations with God and having conversations with himself. That's all the book of Psalms is all about. A man having discussions with God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those are private conversations with God. And Psalm 42, verse 5. Why are you cast down on my soul? Private conversation with self. I you get what I'm saying. It's a therapy for your soul. Learning to go to God and just pour your anguish before God. For Psalm chapter 1 and verse 10. That was what Anna did. And I went to church, not to play. She went in the bitterness of her soul to church. She prayed to God and wept in anguish before God. Wept in anguish before God. When you see scriptures like Psalm 61 and verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed? Lead me to the rocker that is higher than I. In James chapter 5 and verse 13, he said, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Let him pray. Take it to God, whatever it is. Take it to God. Psalm 57 and verse 2. I will cry unto God most high. I will cry unto God that performs all things for me. Because in Psalm 34 and verse 15 we are told that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His ears are open to their cry. 
private conversations, you go to God and pour out your heart before God. Pour out your heart before God. Before men, you can put on your veil. When you turn to God, the veil has to be taken away. You stand up before God and say, if you don't help me, then I'm done for. I'm done for. On this matter, I will not let you go except to bless me. Jacob went before God like that, right? I will not let you go. Remember that scripture? Hannah was there until she had peace. She left that place and her countenance was no longer sad. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't have the baby that night. But she had God's word, God's peace on that matter. She left that place with an assurance that on this matter, me and God will have crossed the line. Are you getting what I'm saying? How do you know you have prayed through on anything when the burden lifts? When the burden lifts? You see, you can finish praying, sorry, you can stop praying without finishing praying. I wish there was time, man. You can stop a prayer, but you've not finished. Abraham was talking to God. He stopped, but he didn't finish. He stopped, but he didn't finish. Genesis 18. You can stop without finishing. Jesus was praying, Luke chapter 11. And he didn't stop until he finished praying. When he was done praying, when he had finished praying, then the disciples said, teach us to pray like John also taught. Many have bought that process. They are in a hurry from God's presence. You stay with God. You stay with God. Until you and God, you sort it out. And then you learn to talk to yourself. Many people just listen to themselves. They don't talk to themselves. So they act based on impulse, based on what their feelings tell them. And your feelings cannot be trusted. Your feelings can change. You must learn to talk to yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church, this morning? Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? You pinch yourself and say, no. What do you want to do? What, what, what exactly are you trying to do? You learn to talk to yourself. Psalm 42, verse 5. Psalm 42, verse 11. Psalm 43, verse 5. You learn to talk to yourself. This is so important. That's the very first thing. Stop, don't, stop listening to yourself. Start talking to yourself. The acts will go forth. How are you feeling today? He said, I don't ask we go forth how he is feeling. I tell him how to feel. I tell him how to feel. I tell him how to feel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number two, a continuous exposure of your mind to the word of God. That's how to develop a prosperous soul. A continuous exposure of your mind to God's word. To God's word. It says, it leads me beside still waters. It restores my soul. Those waters are symbolic of God's word. In Psalm 19 and verse 7, the Lord, the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Just spending time. Like you're in this service now, just hearing God's word. Are you feeling empowered by this moment? Hearing God's word. There is hope for a tree. Even if it is cut down by the saint of water, it will sprout again. Just hearing God's word, a continuous exposure of your mind to God's word. James chapter 1 verse 21, receive with meekness the engrafted word. It is able to save your soul. That's why I don't know how you can go to a church where they are not teaching the word. How are you going to make it? In this world, how are you going to make it? 
go to a church and you just, you just dance, you just shout, you're just excited, you just hear stories. You can't tell the devil, this is a story my pastor told. How do you deal with the devil? It is written. That's why you see me preaching and I'm quoting Bible to you. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. When I leave your face, the word stays with you. The word stays with you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you can leave the standard of the word against that tidal wave of the enemy. And you won't say, my pastor said no. You say, the Bible said. The Bible said. The Bible said. Job's John 6. Look at verse 27. John 6, 27. One to go. Yeah. Labor for what? For the food. And endures to everlasting life. Don't make your biggest investment in things that have no permanence. Things that will not last. Look at your Bible. Second Timothy 4.13. See what Paul said. Second Timothy 4 verse 13. Look at it. Once ago, how many cloaks? Is it one book? Is it one parchment? Many of us is in the reverse. We have one book like this. It's a book of the month. We use book of the year. The one we choose in January, that's what you eat from January to December. You are snacking your way through life. But when you say the clothes, it can't even feed you in your wardrobe anymore. Too much clothes. With a weak spirit. Heavy week. Empty head. I'm very sorry. I'm not talking about you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It is possible for you to be very sensitive. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is better to be sensitive than sensible. Final thing is make a practice. If you make a practice of those seven things I mentioned, after a while, you'll get used to it. Just make a practice. Make a practice of celebrating people when God is doing great things in their lives. After a while, you'll get used to it. Make a practice, you know, of just being joyful. Even in the face of very difficult situations, you can laugh at famine. After a while, you get used. Are you getting what I'm saying? Practice leads to mastery in anything. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14 tells us that. By reason of use, by reason of exercise, have their senses developed. So you make a practice of doing certain things. You do it intentionally. Intentionally. You don't wait for your feelings to do these things. And then you get used to it. And once you begin to prosper in your soul, then God says we can trust him, trust her to handle the wealth. Because let me tell you this, you can never walk to be wealthy. You can walk to be rich. You can't walk to be wealthy. Wealth answers to altars, whether to God or to Satan. Wealth answers to altars. Wealth does not answer to hard work. When it comes to wealth, it has to be entrusted before it can be acquired. 